The Starfire Protocol has been a OG exotic that predates Solo 3.0 and has always been a fun and very powerful exotic when built into. At one point, it was even used for the use in the Vog Raid against the final boss, even though Solo 2.0 back then was limited how well it could work. Nonetheless, with how easy it is to maintain them, you must have heard of how popular they have become as of now thanks to Solo 3.0. As of now, using Starfire with the new Solo 3.0 abilities will grant you big damage over time and can practically delete everything in a single grenade hit, but also keep your damage numbers going by just using your Rift alone. It's easy to do and amazingly used for in-game content, which is why I'm going to show you how to master it. But you know what else needs mastering? This channel right here. That doesn't make any sense, but please just go along with it. So if you enjoyed the video, then I would really appreciate a like, a sub, and for you to turn on your notification as it goes a long way for me. To start with the subclass, we'll be using Wall of Radiance as the following super alongside our rifts will constantly give us the ability to use our grenades non-stop. The gist for the build is to use your rifts as much as you can and then follow up with your grenades which is all easy to do and follow, so generally I won't bore you with everything involved. Now aspects wise, we have Touch of Flame which allows sneaky grenades to detonate twice. You'll then want Heat Rises where you can hover in the air for longer and glide and will grant mini energy while in the air. For Fragments, you want Ember of Ashes, where you apply more Scorch to targets, Ember of Blistering, where defeating combatants with a solar ignition grants grenade energy back, Ember of Wonder, where rapidly defeating targets a solar ignition generates orbs of power, and Ember of Eruption, where your solar ignitions have increased area effect. For stats, you want 90 Discipline, 80 to 100 in Recovery, and 60 in Resilience. You want to make sure that your recovery and resilience are as high as possible because of how Starfire works. Many of you already know that for Starfire to work, you will need the Empowering Rift, which will leave you exposed in terms of taking damage. Having these two key stats will help navigate the difficulty around them. A key mod now to have are Bountiful Wells for 2 wells instead of 1, Well of Life for a brief increase in health regeneration, Elemental Ordnance for creating wells via grenades, a Font of Might for a 25% weapon buff via wells, and Elemental Time Dilation for increasing the duration of time based wall mods. The way this build works is that you don't need to heavily invest into your mods to get any huge bonus from activating them. It's simply how many exotic and new subclass changes are all that you need to survive and do exceptionally well with. You can still edit the build for more defensive support considering how vulnerable you'll be, such as adding Reaping Wellmaker and Well Tenacity for an extra layer of defense. Pretty simple, and nothing more needs to be expanded until you start to play around with it. For primary, we have the Witherhall Grenade Launcher as it interacting with Starfire is very strong. As Starfire states, that staying in your rift and hitting combatants will generate energy to your grenades. Now applying with a hole to this, you will generate energy back to back and do extra damage and be able to fling your grenades on a target back to back until with a horde or the rift goes. This is where you will see the build become very powerful in end game content, including GMs as the damage ticks applied can wilt down mini bosses quickly. Just have to worry about protection though, but that's second nature for the build. For a second G, we have the trusty scout rifle with outlaw redirection, a nice rapid fire frame scout to use and abuse against minor to major adds that then pack a punch against the high level adds via redirection. This is a scout I would recommend you try and grab at least once since this season's anti champ mods are based from scouts, but at the same time, don't fret as the Statco Staticato 46 can drop this season and can get triple tap and incandescent as a perk combo. This weapon alone makes it better in terms of weapon combos matching with subclass abilities to pull off unique interaction with said loadout, so do keep that in mind. For Heavy, we have Cataclysm, with successful warm-up and bait and switch. The Heavy slot won't be used as much for the following build because of this setup in mind, so I would recommend that you go ahead and grab yourself a rocket launcher of any type with auto-load in a holster. This will briefly increase your DPS while still maintaining everything else in play. For the stats, as mentioned, we want to cover discipline, recovery, and resilience so that the build becomes endgame worthy and ready for anything that it faces. This means that we need to try and balance out the stats so that everything comes up smoothly, or else. So the key stat to start with is discipline, which is at 90, and is more than enough for a passive cooldown. I have left it this high as once I reach master to GM level content, relying on just my rifts to get my grenades back won't always be the best choice to use. We will be using Elemental World to complement this as well, so we should be able to get grenades back fast through passive means. You can add on as well Absolution or Bomber or even the Demolitionist Perk if you can find the correct weapon for the build. 
but of course, just having the bare minimum should just be enough. For resilience, this can be increased as high as you can, but only once you have finished everything else in the build first. This is important as you want your key stats completed first to see the stat differences and see if there's anything else you can do to min-max everything else. If you can reach 100 resilience, great, but if not, then go for the next best thing which is 70 and above just to be safe. For recovery, this area will need a lot of love and having that 80 to 100 either way will do you fine. If possible, you want to at least have insulation for giving you class energy back from collecting orbs of power. And then, have a utility kickstart mod times 2 to make full use of the class ability energy you get back for free. Of course, you can reduce the kickstart mod down to just one, and then have the restorative finisher mod instead, which will grant you energy to your lowest ability upon using the finisher. Recovery, just like discipline, is simple and easy to cover, and because of how well maintained the build is, you can freely adapt the build to any sudden changes if you see that the following gear isn't working as intended. Leftover wise, we have Harmonic Siphon which allows us to create orbs of power via matching elemental weapons, Ashes to Assets for gaining super energy via grenade kills, and Linear Fusion Scavenger mod for increased ammo reserves. Now as we have the bit covered, here are the mods all compiled in the list for quicker viewing. For Head, we have Resilience, Ashes to Assets, Harmonic Siphon, Battle for mod, Arm, we have Recovery, Impact Induction, and Well of Life mod, Chest, we have Resilience, Arm of the Dying Sun, Cocos of Dampner, and Metal Ordnance mod, Leg with Maya Discipline, Insulation, Linear Fusion Scavenger mod and Phantom Might mod, a Bond with Discipline, Utility Kickstart mod times 2 and Elemental Time Dilation mod. We are starting to see a great insurgence of OG exotics making a return for everyone to use and see how well they work with the newly updated Soda 3.0 and right now I can see a lot of promises for some exotics. Items such as Sun Bracers, Winter Skill, Dawn Chorus and of course Starfire Protocol have all now intentionally been buffed in one way or another thanks to Solo 3.0 and now makes them even better at the job than ever before. Things such as being able to deal more damage via melee, super and grenade only or the ability to spew out tons of damage via one single method have made the following exotics exceptionally well with ad clearing and more. I can see some of these exotics being useful for end game scenarios where before they weren't able to do so. Such as example is Starfire, where before in Solo 2.0, its usage was linked down to solely to Well of Radiance subclass, and its stickies were good but required more to make them really viable for end game counters or even boss DPS. Now though, they can carry a whole team from start to finish and will do a ton of damage that can easily outpace other high DPS weapons and loadouts. This shouldn't be a surprise though, as the following build has always been good at this job, just limited in terms of where it can do this too. Mini bosses to some bosses on Legend is where they build before could do fairly well, and instead of using Wither Horde, we would use Polaris Lance as the next best thing. The Solo 3.0 now allows us to do mass dead GMs with little effort involved, and although we need to change up how survival skills will be needed, this can be done well before you start the content. And you know what? I'm glad to see the Zotter make a return as it leans heavily into the rift aspects for warlocks. Rifts are the identity of warlocks and the more we rely on them, the more beneficial they become for everyone involved. The only downside to such a build is that the following exotic has no ornament for it, still. Well, except for being exposed while using your rifts, I would hope that they at least give us something new for Starfire as it really, really needs it and I believe I speak on behalf of everyone here. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.